I'm Atuba Judge and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Hey, today is Friday. Listen, it's a time to plan this weekend and plan it right. You can't plan the weekend without planning your engagement with God's word. You see, every preaching we preach, every Bible scripture you read, every message you hear, it's setting up an atmosphere for his word to come to you. Every one of it. So when we encourage you to stay in the environment of the word, you have to plan it. It doesn't just happen. It's an encouragement to be in the place where the word of God will come to you. And that's all you need, brothers and sisters. That's all you need. <clears throat> we emphasize this last month. Today, if you will hear his voice. Not yesterday, not last week, not two years ago. Today, if you will hear his voice. He didn't say today if he will speak to you. I always love to emphasize that. He didn't say today if he will speak to you. No, rather he says today if you will hear his voice. Do you know even as I'm speaking to you now, I'm setting the atmosphere for his voice to come to you. Not my voice. I'm not saying as I'm talking to you now, it's God that is talking to you. No, 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 sir. That's not how it happens. I'm talking to you. But I'm creating the atmosphere so that through my words, his voice will come true to you. And you will hear him. You will hear him. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Can we call for that daily bread today? I want you to release your faith. He's so near to you. I'm telling you, so close. So close, so close. The words you speak, he hears. The requests you make, he hears. So when we make this request, make it with this assurance that he hears. And because he hears, he'll make it good. Praise God. Say this with me. Say, Father, I demand from you my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. All right. Now, uh, let, let's see if we can enter uh, into this topic, being a witness. Praise God. I told you, that was two days ago, book of Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He said, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. So I was telling you, his, his desire, his scope is that we become witnesses till the end of the earth. Everywhere you go, you will find one witnessing of Jesus. Now, witnessing that you have been used to is when somebody comes around and says, I want to witness Jesus to you. So I want to preach Jesus to you. But brothers and sisters, this was beyond what Jesus was talking about. He was talking about be far beyond what the Jehovah Witness do every, is it Saturday now or Sunday they do that? You know, they go house to house, say we are witnesses of Jesus. Brothers and sisters, that is good, praise God, because we are bringing awareness about his person. But being a witness is beyond talking to someone about him. Being a witness is being one that can be referred to as a fact that that truth exists. Did you get me? I will repeat it. I say being a witness is being one whose life or testimony or presence 
is a fact that that truth, because what you are witnessing, just like a witness in court, what is it? What what is it? Why why do you bring witnesses in court? You are bringing them as fact that that thing which you said is true, or you're bringing them as fact that the experience that we're dealing with was true, and this is the way it happened. See that? Praise God. So now it says He is commissioning us that have received the Holy Spirit to be witnesses to Him. And it takes the power of the Holy Spirit. You cannot just get up and say you want to be a witness to Jesus. It takes the power of the Holy Spirit. What power was he referring to? I'll show you something in John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Thank you, Lord Jesus. John chapter 1 and verse 12. Watch this now. It says, but as many as received him, to them he gave the Right, the old King James says, power. I will explain this in a moment. To so them he gave the power to become children of God. To so those who believe in his name, who were born, not of blood, not of the will of the flesh, not of the will of man, but of God. So he says, those who received him, he gave them the power. Now, we see power there as authority and right. But then the root before you talk about authority, there's, there ought to be some legitimacy. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, now, Jesus said, when you receive the Holy Spirit, you are given the power to become a witness. Right? Now, what qualifies you to be a witness? Is it just the power that you receive? Or something happens in your life by reason of that power? that will put you in a place to become a witness. Because ah, you shall be witnesses. Okay, oh, I received the Holy Ghost. Now, I carry my Bible, I'm going to preach. And that's why we've had many, many preachers who, whose life ended in disasters. Many preachers who nobody wants to be like them. Oh, yes. Because they felt that Jesus was putting a responsibility in their hands. They didn't understand that he was speaking statement of facts. There, there's a difference. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses of me in all these places. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Make sure you become a witness of me. In all these places. Those are two different statements. To the most, we take the second one. Now the second one places great responsibility on you. I don't want to fail. Oh, this Holy Ghost I have received. I don't want to fail. But unconsciously, you don't realize that you, you can slip into living in fear like that. But what he actually meant was... When the, power, when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, something is going to happen to you. And when that thing happens to you, you will not be ordinary anymore. And because you're not ordinary anymore, you will now begin to do things or live in a manner that will remind people of me. Are you seeing now? So that's the reason the disciples didn't have to go to Antioch and have a conference and say, hey guys, from this conference, we're adopting a motion that from henceforth, we shall be called Christians. No! They were living their lives, doing what they are doing, and suddenly, someone thought about it. They said, who do I liken these guys to? Hmm. The only person I can liken these guys to is that man, Jesus Christ. Because I see the way they act. They say, no, they are Christians. That's how the name came about. People who had experienced Jesus. Now, experiencing them, you guys are just the same. You're from the same stock. You see that now? 
So they are not the ones that say we are Christians. So, hey, you know, you guys, no, don't call us you guys. We are Christians. No, that's not what happened. They were the ones that began to call them Christians. I said, well, which one is that one Christian? I don't know, that's what that guy was calling us. Where did they get that from? I don't know. Christian. Come, what's the meaning of Christian? Christ, like, you know, Christ, because you guys are just, oh, really? Oh, that's a nice name. Praise God. That's a nice name. Oh, cool, cool, cool. That's how the name stuck. I know some It was unbelievers that called them Christians. So, me, I'm not a Christian. How can I be answering the name of unbelievers? How dumb, how dumb can people be sometimes? Someone made an observation, an honest observation. He said, because it's unbelievers that, that call them Christians. I'm not, don't call me a Christian. I'm sorry. Are you a Christian? Sorry, I'm not a Christian. I'm a child of God. Okay, child of God. Is it Jesus that mentioned child? Is it Jesus that formed the English child? Is it he that formed the English? It's still unbelievers that formed the English. It's <laughs> God. So, you know, we get into all these things that don't really matter. And we leave the most important things. So, when the Holy Ghost comes upon a man, something happens to him. And when that thing happens to him, the thing that takes place within him, which is the work of the power of the Holy Ghost, once that thing happens, that man is now given the right and authority to function as a child of God. Brothers and sisters, it is only children of God that bear witness of Jesus. Those who are not children of God cannot be a witness of Jesus. It is impossible. So this is what the Holy Ghost does. He makes you a child of God. Then he gives you the rights to function as a child of God. You need to understand this. Praise God. So now you receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. And that power is not what is translated as authority or right. That power is, is, is a force that does a work in you. And when that work is done, you are changed to a new man. Having been changed to a new man, something happens next. You are now given the rights, the authority to function in a class. Oh, let's, let's look at Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. Leku sobre de gede hiakaka. Now, now this, is, this, is, this is a perfect example of what we're talking about. Acts chapter 10. This is Peter preaching when he was invited to Cornelius' house. And he got there and saw the experience and, and, and the people gathered. And he began to preach to the house. And then he got to verse 38 and it says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Mm -hmm. God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and with power. So Jesus was anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power. Take note. He was anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power. Jesus said, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Are you following now? You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you and you will be witnesses. Okay. Now here, Peter says, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the whole, he, he specifically used the phrase Jesus of Nazareth because he, he wanted to relate with him as a man because he was trying to get the attention of the people. 
right? So this is how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. So that guy, that boy that grew up in Nazareth, Jesus is from that village of Nazareth. God anointed him with the Holy Ghost and with power. Then what happened after that? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Mm. So Jesus, being anointed of the Holy Ghost and receiving the power which gave him the right to function here as the Son of God. So he called himself, I am the Son of God. And then he began to flow. And the Bible said he went about doing good. And that was his ministry. The ministry of doing good. Everywhere he went. You know, we have that song, everywhere he went, he was doing good. Almighty healer, he healed the leopards. You know the song, praise God. So he, he went about doing good. Why? because of the anointing and right that was upon him. And that right and anointing came by the Holy Spirit. So brothers and sisters, when you are anointed with the Holy Spirit, this is the same thing that happens to you. If you are anointed with the same Holy Spirit Jesus was anointed with, this is the same thing that must happen in your life. You go about doing good. Now, like I said earlier, it's not something you force. It's not something, you know, sometimes, you know, we, we, we try to do these things. We gather people, we put them in a school, school of ministry, and then we begin to teach them how to do good. No, sir. I had a bro fehinga and then an echo sobre. Listen to me. It is the work of the Holy Spirit in them that will translate in them doing good. It is not a teacher teaching them to do good. That's the truth. And that's why we have many people who are in ministry, but they, don't, they simply don't know Jesus. Because, see, all their things, everything they are doing is but fake. They learn, they are learning to do it. You don't learn to do this thing. It's just like speaking in tongues. Why don't we gather people and start teaching them how to speak in tongues? We tell them, no, nobody can teach you how to speak in tongues. The Holy Ghost comes into your life and suddenly you begin to speak a language. Then why is it that difficult? Why are we training people to act good? Why are we training people to behave in a certain manner as Christians will behave? Brothers and sisters, we are taking out the power that does this work. And the truth is, you know, that's the thing. Because we want to gather people in, our, in, our, in, in the auditorium and, and feel, oh, we are teaching them. Brothers and sisters, you don't teach people these things. There is the Holy Spirit that comes upon them. And when it comes upon them, a power is released into their life and they begin to do good. It, it, it alters their genetic orientation. I'm telling you the truth. And you know, you don't understand somebody's born again and he's still eating, living in sin. He still lies like anything, but he's been born again for 10 years. No, you are not born again yet. You are not because you are not a witness for Jesus. This is not the Jesus. See, this is why would Jesus say you will be witnesses? Because the same Holy Spirit that was causing Jesus to do what he was doing will now come upon you. And he will cause you to do the same things Jesus was doing because he is the character that was at work in Jesus. So if he is in you, he will become that same character, causing you to go about doing good. But the question really is, have you received the Holy Spirit that Jesus talked about? If you haven't, this is the time to be sincere before him. I say, Holy Spirit, I beg of you, fill me. If you've got to spend this weekend to be assured of that, please do. It's very important. 
I pray that the Lord will carry you. I call she blade Saya. Jesus seeks true witnesses. People who will witness him as he is. I, I pray he will find you. I pray your mind, your hearts, your soul will be yielded to be a witness indeed. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'll see you on Monday. God bless you. Bye.